أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم الحمد لله All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, seek His help and ask Him for forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all the evil in our soul and from all wrong actions. Whoever Allah misguides, no one can guide. I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one, He is one, having no partner. And I testify that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and give him peace with his family and his companion. Verily, the best speech is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best guidance. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we've all gathered here today after the Salat Maghrib. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our prayers. Dearest congregation, Alhamdulillah, here we are again, yet another session where we are discussing on the signs of Tawheed and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to be precise, the 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is coming to fourth week and we are meeting uh, and we are still discussing uh, on, on the grounds whereby we understand the school of thoughts that are evolving around Tawheed, whereby uh, a person... Uh, knows or explain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sense of uh, the knowledge uh, derived from, from the approach that uh, major school of thoughts are taking. So, um, before I embark on, on, on the subject for today, as in continuation of what we had last week, uh, the time of Maghrib and Isha uh, is, uh, is whereby it's known as Mabayna Maghrib wal Isha. It is an important period of time for a Muslim and uh, it is important that we take this time seriously that we are indulging in acts of worship, acts, acts, acts that benefit uh, a Muslim. Uh, be it Qiraat uh, quran reading of Qur'an where you wear it or where you, you have certain timings, a certain stop where you uh, approach the continuation of your, your, your readings or dhikr or readings or listening to uh, um, um, knowledge like what we are doing right now, seeking or uh, imparting knowledge. All these are things that we should uh, indulge ourselves in between Maghrib and Isha. So, having said that and uh, having to understand this or I would say realizing this, the indulging that you are, you are, you are going to do, uh, it's what is known as Barakatul Awqat or the blessings of time. So, uh, we need to approach and make ourselves understand that we have to make the time that are available for us to do acts of worship. And uh, hence, all these uh, are in the, uh, uh, in the phenomenon of understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when one person understood this, well, it is known as ma'rifah, uh, a point of of understanding where you realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the knowledge of Tawheed. Therefore, we need to understand the, the, the approaches that are available and indulge in this knowledge of Tawheed in a sense where we understand that we are all aware of our time, we are all aware of our deeds, we are all aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing. Uh, all these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be coming uh, to understand uh, is the knowledge of, uh, of, of Tawheed. So therefore, it is something that uh, we need to uh, understand. It is all embedded inside this, uh, this science called Tawheed and we are continuing to, to this approach inshallah. So, uh, continuing from last week discussion of school of thoughts uh, and the approaches that are taken by the school of thoughts that are available, we talk about <coughs> Matrudi, we talk about other school of thoughts that are available and um, uh, they are all unique in their explanation. Uh, can I have a drink please? 
<coughs> so, which is unique in their own explanation. So we shall continue with the last week of explanation that we stop, inshallah. Thank you. Excuse me. All right. So last week, we spoke a great deal on uh, Matrudi. And the following week of, uh, of the two weeks before this, we spoke about uh, uh, Mu'tazila. All these school of thoughts are important for us to um, make up what uh, the evolution that, that was happening before and right now, how do we um, uh, achieve to, to, uh, to understand these 20 attributes or who came out with this. Therefore, with these guidelines, inshallah, we will uh, embark on, on the 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we were dealing with or we, um, we sort of uh, make ourselves understand uh, the, the school of thought of Ash Ash'ariya. So, the Ash'ariya which we are, or Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, uh, uh, are familiar with or I would say uh, is holding on to, these are the school of thought that, uh, that, that, that uh, analyze the 20 uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the Ash'ari, uh, they hold on to a few uh, creed that we are going to talk about tonight. And uh, I will expand to how the evolution around uh, um, from time to time, from the time of Mu'tazila, and then uh, this was what happened last few weeks when I spoke about how Mu'tazila uh, uphold their, their, their creed, and then it was changed by Abu Hassan Ash'ariya, where he, uh, where he, 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 uh, he asked his teachers a certain question where they could not answer, and therefore he break up or he went out of uh, Mu'tazila school of thoughts when he was 40 years old and then he came out with his own uh, theology or understanding. Here we are discussing on his uh, understanding or, or on his creed inshallah. So he mentioned that God is all powerful. Therefore, good is what God commands and evil is what God forbids. And it is human that take ground or to how he wants to take up the good or the evil. And it is therefore his contribution to his idea that he wants to follow his nafas or he wants to follow good that he will attain merits or he will attain sin. So that's how the approach of uh, Abu Hassan Ash'ari in his understanding uh, of uh, the creed. This is different to uh, Mu'tazila, which I explained uh, from the beginning of uh, the class where I spoke about how Mu'tazila has the idea of a person that, uh, that, uh, that is more better, that is more uh, the, the, the priority uh, comparing to, to, to the, uh, to the uh, Nakal or the Al-Quran, I would say, or the Hadith or the sacred text. Um, I will explain to this more uh, in, in later part, inshallah. So the unique nature and attributes of God cannot be understood fully by human reasoning and the senses. This is again another uh, contrast to what uh, uh, Mu'tazila has the idea of. So again here, if we, we are looking at Ash'ariya, the unique nature and attributes of God cannot be understood fully, meaning we cannot understand that and we cannot um, 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 give a good explanation to how and what God is. Uh, therefore, we cannot analyze only by the sacred text or only using the sense of human brains, how cognitive works. That, but then we need to combine that. Uh, this is what his, uh, his, uh, his further creed uh, will be talking about, which is intellect, uh, inquiry is decreed by Quran and by Prophet Muhammad. Hence, interpretation of Quran, tafsir and the hadith should keep developing with aid of older interpretation. This is a major uh, difference and this is a major fatal mistake 
if you get someone who do not hold this creed. Um, we find that today in, in our, our environment or in our society today where, where youth um, uh, do their own interpretation or do not follow the guidelines of the older interpretation, interpre interpreter where translation of Quran was not used by uh, them to take reference of but instead they do their own translation and using their mind to read on certain translation in the Quran where that would lead them to astray. We find a lot of radical a lot of radicals they come from this ground where they do not take uh, Ibn Kathir for instance or any form of Sahaba uh, uh, we have famous uh, Sahaba like Ibn Abbas all these people all these scholars all these Sahaba they are they are interpreters and they interpret uh, certain verses according to where they understood from uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam hence when uh, the the generation uh, uh, arises from uh, uh, not deriving from the school of thought that we are dealing with which is uh, what we are uh, what what i mentioned just now as the creed of uh, ash'ariya which is i repeat that again yeah he mentioned that intellectual inquiry is the creed by the quran and by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam all right so of course we believe in that the sacred text yani al quran or hadith anything has to come up from there first Hence, he says, thus, interpretation of Quran or Tafsir and the Hadith should keep developing with the aid of interpre uh, uh, interpretations of the older people or the, or the, 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 the one before. So, holding on to tradition, holding on to where uh, uh, translation are done by Sahaba, by, by Tabi'in and, and formally by that, by, by, by the line or by the lineage of who they, the, the chain that, that they are studying with or they, they are, they are um, taking it from is important here. Um, so, um, I'm coming from uh, where I'm explaining Tawheed in a sense of creed that, that is used as a lens. Uh, so, if you are coming from this school of thoughts, then you will use this lens. Therefore, the result of your understanding might be different from the lens of another school of thoughts. That is why, from the beginning of the class, I do not uh, um, uh, exactly go jump straight away into the 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I explain the whole formula of how it happens. So, Abu Hassan al uh, uh followers will, will have creeds uh, which is very familiar to us as uh, as this is the, um, the, the uh, this is I would say the mother of where the creed of what we are holding on to uh, derives are derives from. All right. So the, the I move on to uh, to Abu Hassan's uh, um, <clears throat> understanding of um, of Allah. He says God may forgive the sin of those in hell. So we have other school of thoughts that do not um, have the same idea. We have Mu'tazila, we have Ibadis, uh, uh, which is the other school of thoughts, which is mainly coming from Khawarij. Uh, these people or this uh, school of thoughts, they believe that once you enter hell, fire, it's the end. That means it would be forever. But in the school of thought of Abu Hassan al Sha'ari, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive and may take out people from hellfire to be, en to be entering uh, Jannah. That's what we hope, inshallah. Uh, although humans possess free will or more accurately, freedom of intention, uh, they have no power to create anything. Thus, simply decide between God's even possibilities. So, any, any or all humans act, even the raising of a finger, 
are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the human being who performed the act is responsible for it because they have acquired the act. This is not what the Mu'tazila believe, whereby anything and everything comes to the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done it such a way. So be it. So that person just do whatever he wants or he likes. Because morally, his mind will say yes or no, and that is the understanding of creed. Whereby, what we understand in, uh, in, in the school of thought of Abu Hassan, what you do, you are responsible for it. And also to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is the, the ultimate uh, the ultimate uh, creator or, or putting into action to whatever that we are doing. So in other words, we have the choice and we are responsible for it. So the, the Quran is uncreated word of God in essence. However, it is created when it takes on form in letters or sound. This is a very big um, a discussion between um, a school of thoughts where it is mentioned that the Quran is makhluk. So the Quran is created. So we, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Ashariya, we believe that the Quran is uncreated words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in essence. In essence, it is uncreated. So, however, it it is created when it comes into word. That is why we say Kalamullah. Alright, knowledge of God. Um, I believe whatever that I'm saying right now is something that we precisely um, lay out in a, uh, in a table, uh, I would say in an open table format where I will personally uh, deal with it when it comes to 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when uh, when we approach one by one. So I will come back to this. But these are all the main creed that we should know the essence of, of Abu Hassan Ash'ari, al uh, Ash'ariya uh, school of thoughts. Yeah? So knowledge of God comes from studying the holy names and attributes in, in addition to studying the Quran and Hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I have ever um, explained the, the, the word naql and aql. So this is a very simple format for us to understand uh, when uh, when uh, uh, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is dealing with a certain um, um, a certain understanding to put out as an argument, we would uh, make it. We will realize that with two aspects, which is the naql, which is the dalil, which is the quotes from Quran or Hadith, and we use the aql, and we basically balance it and comes out with something. Um, so besides this, the Mu'tazilas or the Athari school of thoughts, they do not use <laughs> the more of Akal or the more of Nakal. So they would use one side of it. It is like exactly the Nakal or exactly the Akal. So mainly these are the bigger uh, 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 um, approach to, to the schools of thoughts that are available here. So, we, we find that the, the sentence that I just mentioned just, just now is the creed of Abu, Has, Abu Hassan. He mentioned that knowledge of God comes from studying the holy names and attributes, which is the, uh, the aql, in addition to studying Quran and hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So, we need two aspects. We need two things. We, we cannot blindly Oh, wait, we, we, we will learn about something, uh, a term that, uh, that is being uh, um, introduced by uh, another scholar by the name of Sanusi, another great scholar that enhances or, or, or uses uh, Abu Hassan Ash'ari's uh, school of thought to, 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 um, to expand the understanding of 20 attributes, inshallah. Right. So, Muslim must believe in the five pillars of Islam. So, this is what Abu Hassan Ash'ari uh, understanding or school of thoughts uh, make and uh, make and uh, make a commitment for 
every mukallaf, every Muslim, you must believe in the five pillars of Islam. And that would be an obligation. Wajib. Taib. And then Muslim must believe in the six pillars of Islam. So five and six pillars of Islam is a must. It's a must. It's, a, it's, it's like an obligation um, 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 bubble that we see, uh, that we have in uh, Abu Hassan's uh, uh, idea of getting to know or knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do not know the five pillars of Islam, if you do not understand the six pillars of Islam, then basically Tawheed is a lack. It's a lack. It means that there is there is something that need to need need, need needed to be to be add on to. All right. So in all uh, in all prophets of Islam, Adam to Muhammad and the angels uh, Ashari also have belief about Allah's attributes that are unique to them. As such, that this is what we are going to talk on in details and some of the example that I am just giving on. Uh, basically, uh, Abu Hassan Ashari is, uh, is, 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 is a school of thought that created this and it was uh, revisited by another scholar which I will mention later on. This scholar came out with the attributes and came out with all the rules, the, the, uh, the significant way to understand it and that one is so systematic that it captured the eyes of Muslims during the 15th century. I will talk about that inshallah. So, uh, so this is what we are talking about. Uh, when Abu Hassan al-Sha'ariya, he explained about uh, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the permanence without beginning, uh, endurance without end, absoluteness uh, and independence. And uh, uh, he is a uh, dissimilarity to created things. He is not similar. And he, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is all powerful, willful, knowing, living, seeing, hearing and speaking significance attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He underlined this. Somehow it was clear but it wasn't that um, strong enough because probably there were, there were some framework that were missing. All right. So, uh, having to understand this and having to say that Abu Hassan Ash'ariya, he created this framework, I want to bring back to our studies last week when we understand about Mu'tazila. So, I'm going to give some different differences that, that, that we have uh, within the school of thoughts of uh, Mu'tazila and uh, Ash'ari. So, Al-Ash'ari... Uh, the ideas concerning uh, divine attributes or sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are reaction to those of Mu'tazila. Because like what I mentioned, like we have explained or make understood of the whole history behind this. Abu Hassan Ash'ari, he was a follower of Mu'tazila for 40 years until he had a questions or until he had questions where he cannot uh, apprehend his own. He asked his teacher. Apparently, his teacher couldn't answer that. So that's where the point of breakup. So every single thing that Mu'tazila has on or riding on is being rebut by Abu Hassan Ash'ari. You can see that according to uh, 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 according to the school of th thoughts of Ash'ari, Allah is powerful, knowing. Living, seeing and speaking through attributes of power, knowledge, life, hearing, sight, uh, speech. These attributes are super added to his essence, to his zat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his own is super added by all hearing, all seeing, all that is his attributes, adding, adding, adding. You can add into a lot of other things which are suitable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is unlike what Mu'tazila has the idea of. Mu'tazila is making it into one. So in this, he completely defers to Mu'tazila who said God's attributes are completely identical with his essence. It's one. It's one. So, 
That is why I can give an example of when we say Ya Allah, we cannot include everything inside. But when we say Ya Allah, Ya Alim, Ya Allah, that's why we separate that. When we ask for the essence of Allah, we know Allah who is Al Alim, who is all seeing, all, and that is all His attributes, and it's all super added to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that is what it's 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 the main big difference from Mu'tazilah. All right. So for instance, like what I mentioned just now, oh Allah, yeah. So there are a few more other major differences that I will highlight when when we come to the subject itself after we come into the twenty attributes, inshallah. So I'm moving on with the evolution of the movement uh, in the science of Tawheed itself. So if I may recall, uh, we see the world of few school of thoughts. Uh, from the beginning, we see Mu'tazila, uh, and they are the dominant one. And then uh, we see Abu Hassan Ash'ariya, uh, and also Al Maturudi, uh, and then uh, uh, took over with the argument and also won the hearts of many from that point of that point of time. So from there on, the creed spread all over the world. This was happening in the 10th century. All right, in the 10th century. And then it spread all over the world. And these few well-known scholars pursue on the understanding of Abu Hassan Ash'ari. So Abu Hassan Ash'ari is a very big name. On this scholar's breakthrough, from where he broke free from Mu'tazila, he came out with one framework. And this framework was used by Al-Matrudi. And then it was used through the 11, 13, 14 and then 15th century, one bright light came in into the, Muslim, into the Islamic universe, I would say. They are, uh, um, um, uh, they are the one that actually emphasize on the school of thoughts of Abu Hassan al-Sha'ari. And it, it, they came out or they, 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 uh, they have a big breakthrough that... Uh, that uh, produce the framework to be a very clear one, uh, um, inserting a few other aspects that is essential in Islam and made that 20 sifa or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be something that people memorize and it becomes a standard way of understanding because the approach are well accept, well accepted by the scholars in Masir, by the scholars in Makkah, by the scholars in the Malay Peninsula. Uh, this is a very, uh, very big thing that we are going to talk about before we jump into the twenty attributes of uh, Islam. So, mainly they are Abu Bakr Al Baqilani, so and Al Imam Haramain Al Juwaini. So, and then the Mutakhirin, which is Al-Fakhruddin Ar-Razi, Al-Badawi. And then uh, we, we, we see that this was being extended again. The teaching of Ash'ari, I mean, continued to develop in the later period through the work of these celebrated figures and uh, to, whom move, to, to whom most uh, Sunni theologians have referred to. And their students are also uh, um, 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 appreciating this school of thought because during those times, the arguments mainly are from fiqh, from sharia. But also, they need to see where they are coming from through, through the lens of. Like what I mentioned just now, all these people, they look at the lens where you are coming from, from the argument. So, as you can see, when I spoke to the few names that, that, was, uh, that was mentioned just now, mainly um, uh, Imam Al-Haramain, uh, which is Al-Juwaini, he is the teacher of... Uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Muhammad Al-Ghazali which is uh, Imam known as Imam Ghazali so he is a very big figure so himself being a Sunni uh, Imam Ghazali took over the understanding of uh, Abu Hassan Ash'ari and, and because it was taken by his teacher uh, uh, Imam Al-Haramain so when he took over that he expanded that uh, that became something like an official um, Tawheed um, school of thoughts uh, at that era, during that era, because Abu uh, uh, Abu Hamid is a very big name during those times. So, so this this happened during the 11th century. So, 
but I want to talk about after that. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, it became there upon concrete and much more, it's like a cement, you know, becoming more harder and harder. And it become really concrete by the time when it's 15th century. Subhanallah, this is what I'm talking about. By the 15th century, Islam has already spread widely into our area, the Nusantara. So the creed, the understanding is Ilmul Kalam. So we have this understanding of the science of Tawheed is known as Ilmul Kalam. And it was a very big thing. Uh, it was a very big thing because uh, it's a, uh, you, we have big names, you know, people coming from uh, Falembang, people coming from uh, 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 staying in Makkah for years, they come back with this ilm, they come back with this book. But you want to see how it evolves. So uh, it becomes, uh, it, is, it, is, it is an ilm that is sought for. It is an ilm or it is an, a knowledge that people are looking for and want to understand uh, prior to, yeah, to, to, to making ibadah to Allah. So like what I mentioned just now in the beginning of it. You know, when we want to start on with, uh, with the, 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 the things that you want to do that you call an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to know the God. You need to know Allah. How do we know that? So this is how uh, the, the, the scholars of the past make us understand and who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by means of framework. Alright, so the most important uh, ashari for the Malay Kalam or the Malay uh, 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 book or the ilm of Kalam or the ilm of Tawheed is an intellectual de de descendant of this scholar which is known or it's called uh, Abu Abdullah As-Sanusi. We are going to talk about him a lot. Uh, as, as it is, I think he is the one, he is the man. Uh, he is the one that create these 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us uh, because you see his work to be spreading from Algeria where he comes from to Makkah and to scholars in Azhar who appreciate his work and they formulate it and we have people, followers from there and there on it was passed to Makkah where the Makkans, we have the, the Malays that, 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 that stayed there. So they intend create or recreate the book and make it into Jawi or make it into a, a, a format that we can, we can understand and, uh, and digest and therefore what we have the 20 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I am going to stop here for a while. Um, uh, knowing that uh, we are going to talk about Asanusi, it's going to be a, 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 a quite a lengthy uh, um, understanding. I will take that um, uh, personally uh, next week, inshallah, where I, I'm going to talk about his influence uh, and how he took over Ash'ari uh, Ash School of Thoughts his idea and how he intellectually designed the, uh, the 20 attributes so that we can make a, a some, somehow an understanding or a better grip of it. The, another additional point for, uh, for uh, Abu Abdullah is such that he make it obligation. He make it an obligation to framework it, to make it in, in a way that it is something that Every one who have reached puberty or balir to memorize this. That is an introduction that mainly the other scholars did not make. And that is somehow becoming a, a creed that most of our parts, especially the Nusantara, you can hear songs, you can hear uh, rhythm or, that rhymes or baits that is being uh, uh, um, what do you call that? You're being repeated, like a like a uh, like a repetition um, a line that, that that is being that is being to make an understanding in a way to memorize the twenty attributes of Allah. This is unique. Uh, this is an introduction by Abu Abdullah as Sanusi. Mashallah, Jazakallah khair to him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his work and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, um, carry up his station in, in, uh, in, in Jannah, inshaAllah. 
and uh, inshallah i will stop here uh, with uh, with a clause or with with uh, with a note that we are going to talk about asanusi in the following week and we're going to understand how his uh, his contribution to the 20 attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah till then till next week wabillahi tawfiq wal hidayah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh